One, two, one, two, three, four. Almost a weekend and you don't know what to do. Or you just need something fun to listen to. So, so fun. Yes, we're on the so air. So and the gang's all here, all things on the South Side. We're listening to the South Side Fun. Looking for the best South Side breweries. Or you might just need an awesome place to eat. Southside Pond! Greenwood Evergreen! Southside Blue Island Beverly, pay listen, all sub to You're tuned in to the Southside Pod. Southside Pod! Old Plum Midlothian! Southside Pod! Old Fort Chicago Ridge, Flossmore and Bridgeview. You're listening to Southside Pod! And belly up to the nine foot homemade oak bar. Pour yourself a cold one. 30 minutes of good in a world of dumb that is Southside Pod begins now. Bill's here, Mike's here, my name is Chris. Welcome into my basement right here on the South Side. You heard our sponsor at the beginning of the show, Family Waterproofing Solutions. They've been around for 10 years now. They win all kinds of awards, back-to-back winners, Southland's best right here on the South Side. Family owned and operated, veteran owned and operated. The whole idea is keeping your basement water-free, protecting your foundation, taking care of the area around the home as well. You see concrete going up and down. That's the beginning of a problem. Give them a call, 24-7-365 at 708-330-4466. Mention Southside Pod, you get a discount. Your basement's best defense is at FamilyDry.com. The guys are going to join me later on in this half-hour program, and we're going to Blue Island for a beer that comes out once per year, and people are excited about it each and every time. But first, there's a big parade. It's coming. It's about a month away, and our first guest is going to sit down and talk about it with us. I always love it when we get a guest that walks in with beer. It's the season, isn't it? Marianne, Rowan, Leslie, it's the season for it. We get close to the high holiday, as my grandmother used to call it. Uh, you know, my father starts talking with a brogue for some strange reason, and uh, the Southside Irish Parade is right around the corner. How are you? I am great. How are you, Chris? Good. You you are in charge this year. Is that how this works? Is it- I'm the co-coordinator. Co-coordinator of a giant parade. Yes, the largest community-based parade outside of Ireland. It is a huge parade. I remember I used to march in it with the Brother Ice uh, band, and we would be in all kinds of different parades, and I know we took a couple of trips to different places. But when you went to the Southside Irish Parade, you were going to walk for a while. Like, that was the one. And it was also the most fun parade to be in. That was the one we all look forward to. It was better than being downtown. But when you went and did it, you were going to be in a parade for a long time. Exactly. Exactly. All the way, well, before 103rd at the staging and then past 115th where the it's the egress. So you have to... It's a little over, what, a mile and a half? Yeah, yeah. When people get to the end of it, I remember you just kind of start scattering. Like, you get out there, now there's the ice rinks out there, right around 115th, so they got the Morgan Park Ice Arena, and you get right around there, and it's not really like, okay, you're at the end. It's like people just start walking off in the different areas, and it's just kind of like, it just kind of ends, right? It just kind of tapers off, right? That's funny you say that, because that's one of my things this year, is we have um, an end stager who's going to be putting you in a specific area to leave that way so that it's just not very scattered okay we're much we're, we're very organized You're organized good, yes. for you. Yes. good for you I, I will tell you a little a uh, little bit of background here my so my dad 30 i always i always get it wrong and he yells at me so 34 years with the chicago police department retired uh was a beat cop in the sixth district i think for the first 16 years so he he was a street he was a street cop who ended up in his last, I don't know, 10 years as the commander of traffic and special events. So all the parades fell underneath him. Wow. So I have gotten, when I was older, towards the end when he was going to retire, I have jumped in the golf cart with the commander and and rode that entire thing, seen the operation that it is. I understand that this is a big undertaking. So how how many people does it take to put this thing together? Wow. Well, there are volunteers that we basically work year round, but it really ramps up a little bit before Christmas. And then after the first of the year till St. Patrick's Day, until the parade day, we meet once a week. So I'd say there's maybe a core of 15 on the executive committee. And then there's probably about 30 to 40 in the regular committee. And then on the day of, we have 
lots and lots of volunteers. We're always looking for more volunteers to help. Are there perks for being a volunteer? I mean, if there aren't, then fine. But I know that sometimes when you do a volunteer, it's like, all right, you're getting a meal or you're getting a shirt or you're getting you're getting something for it. Yes. Or is it just because you you want to say you were part of the Southside Irish Parade? Well, I was going to say you get street cred, you know, (laughs) saying that you were a part of the parade. But we also have like an event, a thank you event at the end of the parade as well. Is this... Still in your mind, I'm, I know what the answer is, but I'm going to ask it anyway, because Southside Pod goes everywhere and, and we have so many listeners in different areas of the Southside. Is this still the premier Irish parade, St. Patrick's Day parade? Because I know a lot of the other suburbs in the absence of the one on Western Avenue started throwing together their own parades. And then this came back and I still think it's the biggest. But w- what do you think? You know, I I think they all have they're all really nice. There's a one on, there's one on the north side. There's also one on North Side the, doesn't count. Okay. Yeah. Throw them <laughs> True. Out. Throw them uh, out. There's one on Archer Avenue this year yes. as well. And but I really think that we are kind of the um benchmark that they're all going to have to, you know, rise up to. <laughs> so so how much coordination with the establishments along Western Avenue, the businesses, and then of course the bars, the bars and the restaurants up and down there are active. We, we've we had several of them on, uh, you know, Bill Guidey from Cork and Carries. Uh, I've talked with him, uh, John Brand over at Open Outcry, uh, you know, Neil over at, at Horse Thief Hollow. All these different uh, places have told me this is a big deal. They have to operate a different way because of the crowds. They also know there's an awful lot of money to be made on this day because this is what people go out for all day long. How much coordination happens? There's a lot, and the bar owners have been very supportive. Very, a very few specific bar owners have been very supportive of us. You know, like um, McNally's, Mike Cummings at McNally's, uh, Barney Callahan's, Dingers, Cork and Carey. We they allow us to use their meeting rooms to have our meetings. So you know, we're there. We're showing our support for them. They're showing their support for us, and it's a um, win-win situation. So it's a lot of coordination. It really is. And uh, the business owners up and down Western Avenue, it's a benefit for them. And uh, a lot of them sponsor us as well. It costs a lot of money to have the parade. So, you know, we it's a a hand in hand coordination. Yeah, I always wonder about that. I keep thinking to myself, something this big, sure, everybody wants to have it, right? When it went away, it was like, oh, no. It broke my heart and it broke the hearts of everybody that was in the area that made it like their thing. And it's been great since it came back. It really has been. And uh, and then you've had to survive the troubles of the last few years and you're back in, in, in full now. Uh, but when people are saying, I want this parade, I don't think they realize how much money is involved in getting the parade going. You really do rely on sponsorships, right? We do. We really do. And um, sponsorship is very key. I mean, there are a lot of expenses that we have to coordinate. Um, we do hire security force. We hire uh, service sanitation to put portable units all throughout the neighborhood because that was a problem. We try to work with the neighborhood, get feedback, find out what we did right, what we did wrong, and then we try to accommodate everybody to make everyone happy and make it a good event and not like a dreadful event. That thing's like two miles long. How do you make everybody happy? That's impossible. Yeah. It's- like, that's impossible. I can't make everybody in my block happy. How are you making two blocks happy? So that that's an undertaking right there. That's You're right. I mean, we do solicit feedback from the neighborhood. And believe me, people are happy to give you feedback. So, <laughs> you know, and, and it's everybody's neighborhood. So it, it is an inconvenience for some, but not all. But it's also a huge, wonderful, big family reunion for a lot of people. I mean, people tell me that they they've had these wonderful family parties that they haven't seen their family in years. And then all of a sudden, especially now with COVID. So we think this year is going to ramp it up really well. Uh, you know, I I have people that I only see on parade day. It's weird, too, when you think about how close exactly. I live to the route. And there are still people parade day, I will see them walk by and I'll be yelling their name and they'll come walking over. And it's just it's it's like and it's the beginning of spring, in my opinion, too. I don't care what the weather's like on that day. That's the beginning of spring. That's it. That's the start of everything. I'm happy. I'm in a great mood. They're, they're getting ready. They got the Big Ten tournament championships happening that day. They're selecting which uh, every year it seems that way. They're selecting who's going to be playing in March Madness. The White Sox are down in spring training. Everybody's out and smiling. The sun's going to crack through at some point. And that's that's what it's like. But you're sitting here in February right now 
about a month away. What is the focus right now of the committee at this point? Well, we have been meeting and we've had all these uh, different subcommittees of getting all the details tied up. The big thing we're doing right now, though, is planning for our pre prayed fundraiser at Bourbon Street on Saturday, February 25th. Is that because of the size you're doing it there? Because that's not actually on the route. Correct. But it's a big place. Correct. Right. Okay. And that's, uh, we're having traditional Irish music. Um, we're having, you know, modern music. And then we're having uh, Forecast as our headliner. So we've got three different bands going, food, drink, um, a lot of fun. What day is this then? Saturday, February 25th. 115 Bourbon Street. How much do I pay to get in this? $40. 40 bucks. Mere $40 for the And there's food and, and music exactly. thrown into this. Is there drink in, included in this or the drink separate? Draft beers. Draft beers. Yes. For how long? Three to eight. Oh, I can... <laughs> for $40, I can drink for five hours. There you, you guys go. are going to lose money See, on me. bring your friends. How do you make money on that? I, <laughs> Mr. Bourbon Street's a miracle worker. I don't know. That's amazing. He's awesome. Holy cow, that's a great deal. How do do people get the tickets there? Do they go on a website? How do they get more? They can go on the website, southsideirishparade.org. And you can get your tickets there. You can get them at the door. And uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Marianne, Rowan, Leslie sitting down here at the Nine Foot Homemade Oak Bar. They are raising money, doing all the fundraising efforts right now for the big Southside Irish Parade coming up in about a month here in the Beverly neighborhood on the South Side, just nearby there, a little bit over, 111th and Kedzie, my man, Tom Walsh, your Edward Jones financial advisor. Tom's got my money. He's got Bill's money. Mike, he's a stingy guy, and that's why he won't have so much when he retires. Tom Walsh is checking in with me constantly, going over the plan for my retirement, what he's going to do with the funds that I gave him, and he's done an excellent job during these very difficult times. No matter if you're starting out or you're getting towards the end of your work life and you want to make sure you have enough for retirement, speak to Tom. He'll go over a plan. He'll look at your goals. He's got over 20 years of experience. 111th and Kedzie, stop it and see him or give him a call today, 773-779-0023. And Marianne, I'm looking at this fundraiser party. You got Patrick Finnegan, you got Liam Durkin. They're leading in the forecast. Great live entertainment. I know you just announced the Grand Marshal and the honorees. Both the chaplains of the CPD and CFD are going to be Grand Marshals. Father Dan Brandt of the Chicago Police Department, Father William McFarland of the Chicago Fire Department, Beverly Area Planning Association celebrating their 75th anniversary. They are an honoree. I know you're taking applications for the Parade Queen, and there's so much information at southsideirishparade.org, but, but what date is the parade this year? The parade is on Sunday, March 12th at 12 noon, and it's the first day of daylight savings time. So it's your 11 o'clock body clock time. So don't forget, don't, oh, don't sleep worry. in. I'll be ready. Don't worry about that. Do you know how many people are in it right now? Are Because I that's the other thing. I've always thought to myself, like, it'd be cool to be in the parade. And I've had people ask, like, are we going to ever bring the podcast and actually go down in the middle of the street? Now, we'll be on Western I know the last couple of years we've been over at Cork and Carry. I'm guessing I'll be over there again. Uh, we've also popped in over at Open Outcry. We have affiliations with both of those businesses sure. over the years. They've been great advertisers. Um, but like, if somebody wanted to get in too late, I would assume? I am not sure. We do have somebody who handles all of that. We have about 100 entries already. So I do know that we keep the parade to about two and a half hours. So. Okay, so you you have a limit. Yes. You got to get in because you don't want the thing to go on all day. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. A lot of marching bands, I would say. Uh, we love the bands. Everybody loves a marching band. Yeah. You know, that really gets the crowd going. So, yeah, we've got a lot of bands, local bands. I think we have uh, a couple coming from the north side, too. But we'll keep that keep that on the down low, all the right. north side. Marianne Rowan Leslie uh, sitting down here with me. She's one of the co-chairs. Uh, she's got a big task sitting in front of her. Do you get nervous? For for what? For the that podcast? No, 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 oh. not for the podcast. This is easy. Are you kidding me? I made this as easy as I could. You brought me beer. That's oh the God. trick to this. You Sorry. show up, you bring me beer. I'm going to make this the easiest interview of the world. No, no, I meant for the parade. The day of the parade? Sure, yeah, there's always nervous. some, you know, there's always a wild card. But yeah. we do have, um, like I said, we hired a security service. We've got a lot CPD's of... CPD's still out there, too, of course, all yes, right? The they city are. doesn't disavow the parade. Like, Correct. they're involved, right? Okay, yeah. Correct. Okay. And we also have um, off-duty 
police that were having, you know, join the parade. Um, there's always, you know, it's an unusual world that we live in and we have to be, we have to do our watch due diligence. Things. You got to watch out. There could be a balloon over the parade that needs exactly. to be shot down. You have there no idea. Be something, and, you know, <laughs> I think we're okay. That's awesome. It's one, it's one of the greatest parades in this country. Uh, I have people that I know come from out of town. Last year, I had friends from out of town who made this their vacation was just coming out because they always wanted to see the Southside Irish Parade. Uh, I think it's so cool that my entire life, it was something that I could either get dropped off at or walk over to. And I cannot wait to get up there again on March 12th. One more time, 115 Bourbon Street on what day? Saturday, February 25th. 40 bucks. Check out the website, which is? SouthsideIrishParade.org. All right. Marianne, thanks so much for jumping on. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's the middle of the show song. 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 Chris had nothing to put here, so he put this song. It's the middle of the show song. Did I tell you the story about the person that went on Facebook and claimed I was sleeping with his wife? No. Yeah. Was it Was it Mike? No, <laughs> no. This is like a, so his wife would I'm kill put me. The guitar for yeah. this one. His his wife, like Wait, imagine, I imagine on, Mike's Sam. wife as being like a praying mantis. After it's over, she may kill me and use me for food. Like True. she makes me a little nervous. My wife would never have sex with you ever. Chris. <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah, she doesn't even have sex with Let's Mike. Just stop this! Stop this right now! Ouch! <laughs> Ouch, Bill. Ouch. Man, that hurts. Oh, I, I got no comeback to that either. That's oh. amazing. We're married. We get it. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I'm on the Facebook at like, the Facebook. At like 1 o'clock in the morning because I left my computer on. Yeah. So-and-so, it's like two first names. Like, right away, this is like a fake account, okay, right? Like sure. Somebody's using an account that's not their like real James name. James Patrick. Right. I mean, it's got like a cartoon as their, as, their, oh. as their symbol, so it's not even showing their face. Their avatar. Right, their avatar. Exactly. And I click on the comment, and it's in an Evergreen Park page for the EP podcast. It does okay. Evergreen Park. So EP podcast is the original thing that we did where we just did one neighborhood. Sure. It still exists. Southside Pod has all of the Southside. Right. And I go in there, and all it is is a comment underneath that week's show. And the comment is, when are you going to do a show about how you're effing my wife Nice. and having an affair with her, you piece of garbage, Chris Lanuti? He said, tune in Thursday. And he writes this whole thing <laughs> about how you're caught, and I know you you and her are sleeping together, and blah, blah, wow. blah. So Erica's got another husband? So now, here's the thing. I look, and since I don't monitor social media. You don't know media, this guy? No, because okay. I, when I click on it, this account has been made. His name is Jim. was created that day. Gotcha. Okay. This, guy, this account was created that day. But the thing is, it's out there in the public forum because yeah. it's on like one of those like neighborhood pages. Yeah. It's been up there for 10 hours because I don't check Facebook. Yeah. So I don't get my notification. I don't look. So for 10 hours throughout the entire day, this thing has been sitting there on this Facebook yeah. page that I'm sleeping with some guy's wife. Sorry, I thought it would be a good joke. No, there's no, there's no good when, joke When's here. the joke coming? Hold on. No, I, I did it. You did it? Yeah. No, you didn't do it. You better not have been the one that did this. Did no, I thought this? it would be funny. Did you really do it? Yes. And this is your fake account? Yeah. Are you effing with me? Yeah, absolutely, I no, am. Yeah, you didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do it. Your face is amazing, though. Yeah, right cause, but you would have because you would have told me about it. You would have been like, uh, <laughs> you would have thought it's funny. But no, no, no. But my only concern is. For 10 hours, yeah. in the town that Some I live people in, saw it. people saw that Chris Lanuti was having an affair, supposedly. Yeah. So I, it, I, I could they be all good, laughed be good it off. for ratings. They all laughed it off, though, right? So so I come, always really, good. this right. guy? So I come out of the right. bedroom the next morning because Erica gets up really early and she still works from home. Like it's Who's become bedroom? Your bedroom or the guy's wife's bedroom? My bedroom okay. where I sleep with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and I come out and she's sitting there working and she goes, how you doing? And, I'm, and after, you know, pleasantries and me starting a pot of tea, I go, uh, hey, I got to talk to you about something. Start a whole pot of tea. Huh? Yeah, I start a whole pot. Oh. I tell her, my guys, I got to talk to you real quick. And I tell her the story. I'm like, somebody put up something that says that, like, I'm sleeping with their wife. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I just want to make sure you knew about it right. because, like, it's all BS. Like, and I, like, I'm I waiting for her to, like, Make sure react you knew that I was. Right. I'm waiting for her to react to it. Yeah. And her reaction was, she started laughing. And she goes, well, we know that's not true. <laughs> wow. Wow. 
If you've been injured at work, then you need someone who will fight for the care and compensation you deserve. The insurance companies will look out for themselves and their bottom lines, not you. I'm Matthew Coleman, partner and head of the work injury department at the law offices of Parenti and Norm. My team and I have the experience, dedication, and proven results it takes to fight for your rights. Call or text me today at 312-641-5926 or visit us on the web at pninjurylaw.com. A pitcher of beer, a pitcher of beer, let's order another pitcher of beer. That pitcher of beer should come over here, I love that pitcher of beer. Blue Island Beer Company, I'm sitting here with Alan Cromwell, how are you? I'm good, Chris. What are we drinking here? We got to... We're uh, drinking our It's Been a Grip Irish uh, Red Ale. Why is it only in cans? Is it going to be on tap? It's going to be on draft soon. Um, You know, we still got a few that uh, we're uh, getting uh, through here, and the Irish Red will be uh, ready, especially for our our Cabbage Bash event coming up on March 18th at 2 p.m. here in the parking lot. So it's basically like a home run derby, but with cabbages. Yeah, tell me a little bit about this. I think you've mentioned it on the show before, but uh, to refresh people's memories, you you play home run derby with cabbages. Yeah, and the last... Well, it started as a, a fun thing to do after the Southside Irish Parade. Uh, Brian, the brewmaster, and his uh, group of friends uh, uh, would do that on an annual basis. And then we started doing it here at the, the brewery. And the last one we did was in March of 2020. And you know exactly what happened right after uh, St. Patrick's Day. The last March, one you did was? March of 2020. Maybe you shouldn't bring it back. What if you? What if you, What if that was the cause of everything? Was was bashing cabbages with bats? Like you angered the cabbage gods. Well, and look what you brought upon all of ultimately us. Ultimately, we raised money for charity. Our friends at County Fair helped donate the cabbages. The cabbages then that are uh, bashed uh, go to our friends at the Fulcrum Farm, which now has a, uh, a charity um, that helps support veterans called. Uh, farm to veteran and providing food and meals but the cabbages go back to all their livestock and their um their their poultry and uh one of the funniest things i ever saw was a leftover cabbage on a rope and a bunch of chickens pecking at that thing <laughs> all right so three years ago was the last time you had this thing i also remember that when the troubles began shortly thereafter this was one of the beers that yes. you could get delivered to your home and a lot of people we're drinking this beer, uh, sitting in their houses, uh, playing parcheesi with their children, and <laughs> contemplating divorce. Uh, well, I hope uh, we brought families together by making such an amazing beer that I hand delivered. And uh, our friend Tom here, that uh, uh, happens to be just drinking at the bar at the same this time. This is Tom Walsh, uh, your Edward Jones financial uh, advisor. Hey. Nice to meet you in person. <laughs> <laughs> Tom's a regular here, isn't yeah. he? But yeah, yeah, he sure is. He's a super friend. and uh, But he, he and his family have been very supportive, but especially like watching all of his breweries ad- adapt at a time uh, like 2020 was like nothing anybody ever expected or planned for and what you had to make moves to do. So, uh, But this just happened to be made at the time, so it, uh, uh, it really uh, gained a following. People got to enjoy it at that time and um, lucky to make it uh, have it back again this year as well. So Ben a Grip, that's the name of your Irish ale. Where does that name come from? You know, it's an expression that's, uh, you know, one that's about bringing merriment to a, a situation, but, you know, it's been a while. I haven't seen you. Yeah, that's awesome. So it's been a while since I've uh, I drank this, uh, but I love the color. I'm going to put it up here uh, on the camera. Those listening on the audio, remember that you can check this out at the Southside Pod YouTube feed, and you can get to see actually what the beer looks like. But it's a beautiful, beautiful, yeah. dark, it's rich a, color. It's a uh, perfect uh, example of a, a traditional Irish-style red ale. Is this is this one hard to make? I mean, I know that you, your brewmaster is working hard back there, but I mean, like, no. I'm as sure far you... as you know, it's not a uh, <clears throat> you know in the world of hoppy beers, it's not dry hopped, and it's um, uh, other than getting the grain at this time of year uh, when all the breweries are making a traditional style beer for the, to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. So Blue Island Beer Company, located here on Old Western Avenue, um, uh, what is it, 133rd? 13357 Old Western Avenue. So you've got a lot of stuff that you keep up on tap. 
And yeah. then you got things in cans here. And then you have your seasonals, because this is a seasonal. Yes. But this yeah. is a good seasonal. Do you ever, I've, I've asked brewers this before, and people that own breweries around the south side, do you ever do a seasonal and then think to yourself, like, wow, this gets such a response. But like, should this be on tap all the time? Because I would think you've thought about that at least with this one. Uh, yeah, there's a few when they come up and you just see the, um, the demand for them or people enjoy them. Um, but sometimes, you know, how can I miss you when you never leave? You know, it's uh, just like when it's saying goodbye to your wife to come down to the brewery. I'm going to bring Tom Walsh back over here real quick because <laughs> he's drinking it. So Tom's yeah. drinking this with me here. Cheers, my friend. Yeah, cheers. Um, so, so tell me uh, real quick your thoughts about this, seeing as how, like, you know, I mean, you're, you're a paid, paid advertiser. You should get to give yeah, your true. thoughts. And you're paying that, for our beer. That's right. True. You're, you are paying for our beer, too. I, uh, I don't exaggerate when I say as soon as you posted that you had this up, up and running again, I, I made plans on Friday. You made plans with me. You made plans with me. <laughs> Actually, I was gonna I was gonna do it t- yesterday yeah. after work, but I was like, wait, I'm looking at Chris Nudity's account. It's going up and up. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I, I hope so. I hope so. Okay, there's a reason why we call Mike a fool. <laughs> anyway, but but you don't but, have to rub it in, but, Chris. Yes, but he's looking at my account. He's sitting there and he's going. He's like, well, you know, I, I gotta get I gotta get out and have a beer with this guy. Yeah. You know. Right. So we tried yesterday, but you were busy, so we did today, and it really was started at that uh, this Irish Red needed to get out and get a couple cases. Yeah, it's excellent stuff, Al. I mean, is this one of your big ones, big seasonal ones? Is big yes. response? Uh, and it, obviously, it was anticipated. People are excited about it, and they've uh, already been purchasing it. So. Um, you know, I'm just happy to make people happy. How long is this going to be at the brewery here in Blue Island? Just really uh, between the next uh, two months. It'll be probably gone by the end of March. Then it runs out. So make sure you get out here and grab it. And, and you know what? You guys have brought back some big acts lately. I've seen album release parties. Yeah. I know Socks in the Basement came out here and did like a, a podcast, uh, and a Dick Allen signing, book that yeah. was going on, a book signing. You're doing a lot of events. What do you got coming up here in the next couple of weeks? Well, uh, tonight we got a really fun punk rock show with our buddies um substitute prostitute the one substitute prostitute yeah that's the prostitute you don't want well, it makes for a clever is that, band is that, name isn't is it <laughs> <laughs> um mg bailey though a one-man band if you haven't seen him around the area touring the country or uh, uh anywhere else on the internet um uh, matt bailey uh, mg bailey's an incredible talent i'm lucky to call him friend and then a brand new band to us uh, private instigators but um, What's tomorrow this one night, that Tom's talking about because he's got something. Hold on, I gotta let right. me just let me finish the promo. Okay, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna sit here and drink my beer. You take over. No, but tomorrow we have one of your good time friends too, Joe Ryan and the Am Drinkers. Oh, I love Joe Ryan. Joe uh, doing a winter residency here. Um, we also have uh, coming up. He's like uh, every the, second Saturday, right? Right now, yep. Yeah. Uh, up through March, uh, February 18th, we have the Big Lawn Yap for a. Uh, an amazing uh, New Orleans style Mardi Gras show. Uh, Friday the 24th, we have the Grateful String Band doing a fundraiser for our friends with the Frankfurt Bluegrass Fest that we've been a proud sponsor of the whole entire time we've been open. And then February 25th, we're uh, announcing uh, at this moment uh, to you guys, uh, Joanna Connor, she's uh, a pillar of the Chicago blues community, been in Chicago since 1984, she's played with anybody who's anybody. You would have seen her maybe at the Kingston Mines and other clubs in the city, as well as touring uh, uh, the, the U.S. and Europe. Uh, she's got a brand new album coming out in uh, the spring here, featuring all sorts of guest stars that uh, I don't want to uh, name drop anybody too heavy, but uh, you got to come see that show. And that one's February 25th. And then we do it all over again in March, and i got a bunch of other stuff to tell you about then. Now, with, you, with your shows, at the door, should they be going to your website to get tickets? Definitely like, go to blueislandbeercode.com to see the, all the event listings. Some of them do have tickets that are pre-sale, just uh, the reserve seating. Uh, a lot of them uh, also are just at the door. And um, so just uh, follow everybody. Uh, can follow us on Facebook at Blue Island Beer Company, Instagram, of course, and uh, the website blueislandbeercode.com. Give people the one thing besides this beer when they come in here they should try. Being kind to each other. Oh, my goodness. He's the sweetest man in the world, isn't it? That is beautiful. <laughs> I, I'm shedding a tear right now. I was going to say massive political corruption. <laughs> right, that's, yeah, that's, 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 that's a great but beer, right? Yeah, yeah, be be kind, be kind to each kind other. one another. All right, that's great. All right, guys. Cheers. Thank you very much, Al. Appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. Finishing off 30 Minutes of Good Strong with your Southside Bulletin Board brought to you by Cool Clouds Vapor Shop 
Quitting smoking is hard and Cool Clouds wants to give you an alternative. Full taster bar, great CBD products, new location, northeast corner of 95th and Kedzie at 3148 West 95th Street. See all they have to offer at coolcloudsvapor.com. Saturday night, the 18th of February, comedy night at Jack's Place. Get your Valentine, it's going to be a late Valentine's, but maybe you screwed up and go see some comedy. 3915 147th Street in Midlothian, where they offer free pool, $10 domestic buckets, and $15 import buckets. Meanwhile, if your date is a little younger, the Worth Park District is doing a fairy tale father daughter dance. Kicks off this Saturday at 6 30 p.m. $45 per couple for residents, non residents, $55. Dance the night away with a DJ face painting, food, and refreshments on site. They will not let you in at the door. Registration phone number is 708 448 7080. Also on Saturday, Hailstorm Brewing Company in Tinley Park. Go out there for Mardi Gras with the Soul City Juke Band. That is going to be a heck of a party. And on Sunday, they have Paint and Sip as well. Simply Creative presenting that. $55 includes your palette, your paint, your supplies. Call or text Bridget at 815-219-8111 to sign up for that. The rest of your Sunday is brought to you by SidSauce.net. The peppers grown on the south side. The hot sauce is developed here, bottled here, and delivered to your door. It's the only hot sauce I keep in the house. There is something for every type of food, and man, it's tasty. Check out everything they have to offer at SidSauce.net. In the village of Lamont, the Bridge Lamont Wedding Expo happens this Sunday, the 19th, from noon until 4 p.m. Over 20 vendors and small businesses on site, an opportunity to shop for all your wedding needs, from flowers to decorations, gowns, and catering. Get your tickets through LamontDowntown.com. And also this Sunday, the 19th, Block Party and Bad Reputation playing at the Thirsty Beaver in Crestwood, a three-hour show for Sunday fun day from 3 to 6 p.m. One band does all classic rock, the other one is a Joan Jett tribute. Show you love rock and roll at 5599 127th Street in Crestwood. If you have anything for the Southside Bulletin Board, hit us up at southsidepod.com. You can leave a message with a little microphone or type one in in the comments. If you're new, subscribe. Never miss an episode. We are found anywhere podcasts can be found and always at southsidepod.com. It's the Southside. It's the Southside. It's the Southside Pod. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in to the Southside Pod. Y'all come back now, you hear? Yeah, can you, like, look sadder, though? By the way, I don't know about that mic guy. <laughs> That mic looks like he's going to be in rough shape come retirement. Rough shape. Rough shape.